This is Young Family Tai Chi traditional form. We are starting section three. So, uh, new month, uh, new section, and uh, new essential. So, uh, last month, you did uh, raising your head, right? Uh, this month, it's holding your chest and essentially expanding your back. So if you think about your standing practice, remember when you did standing? So you had this up feeling, which is the first essential, but then the second essential is you essentially hold in your chest and expand your back. So whereas the first essential essentially stretched out your spine upward, this one essentially encourages you to spread your energy from your spine out toward your fingers. So it's from your spine out toward your fingers through your back. So you should feel this expanded feeling in your back. And, you know, because of that, your chest is slightly concave because you can't pull your chest out and expand your back, right? So the expanding your back and pulling in your chest kind of go together. So you're thinking of your energy up for the first one and then out from the spine to your fingers for the second one. And later on, you'll have like relax the waist. So that will encourage you to even stretch your spine more, right? You're not only thinking of up, you're also thinking of down. But for this, for this month, we're gonna work on getting your energy from your spine to your fingers, okay? Uh, in preparation for uh, the third section, what I'd like to do for practice is the beginning of the second section from cross hands all the way through to the first single whip, okay? So I'm going to turn around and go the same direction as you, okay? So we're here at cross hands. And embrace tiger, return to mountain. Shift right, turn the left toe just past the corner. Come back, separate your hands, pull in the right foot, swing, step, brush, strike. Roll back. Circle your arms as your weight goes back and turn to the side. Press. Retract the right, attach the left, and press forward. Push. Square up your shoulders in the direction of the front foot and flatten your hands. Come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest, and push to shoulder level. Fist under elbow, shift back, flatten your hands, turn and pull. The right foot goes to 12 o'clock, press down, release the left foot and push out with the right. Ward off and step, step with the right, pull down with the left, make your fist, heel touch and punch. Repulse monkey, swing, step, hand to the shoulder, turn and strike. Two, swing, step, hand to the shoulder, turn and strike. Three, swing, step, hand to the shoulder, turn and strike. Diagonal flying. Turn, pull in the right, step out and close. Open and turn your left foot. 
Raise hands and step forward. Circle your arms, push off the ball of the right foot, root your right heel and close. White crane spreads its wings. Turn your hands, pull down. All your weight goes to the back. Step and close. Turn. Step and open. Left brush knee. Turn your hands. Swing. Step. Brush. Strike. Needle at sea bottom. Yield forward. Pull in the back foot. Push off the heel of the front foot as you pull back. Change your footwork and sink down. Fan through the back. Come up. Turn your right hand. Attach the left. Step. Bow stance. And separate. Turn body and chop with fist. Circle your arms as you turn 135 degrees. All the weight is in the back. Make your fist step and strike. Parry block and punch. Hands come toward the center. Swing, step, parry, block, punch. I uh, step up and uh, grasp the bird's tail, right word off. Roll back. Turn toward the corner as you rotate your arms. Then as you shift your weight back, turn to the other corner. Press, pull in the right, attach the left, and expand forward. Push, square up your shoulders, flatten your hands, come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest, and push up to shoulder level. Single whip, shift back, flatten your hands. Turn and pull all the way around. Press down, release the left foot. Ward off left, hook hand right, standing ward off step, Deflect, strike. Okay, how did that go? So uh, obviously I can't watch and do it at the same time, but um, a couple of things that uh, I would like to remind you of. Um, one is that um, Beginning with the second section, we start doing things to the diagonal. And one of the things that often happens when you're like doing embrace tiger, return to mountain. When you step out, okay, you're here and you're stepping kind of toward the corner. The important thing is step wide enough, okay? Very often people end up with your feet like either one line, two side, you know, step wider. It, it feels like you're really stepping out, but you will have much better stability if you do that. So think about step out, okay? And uh, the other thing is when you're doing fist under elbow, so you are here. You're at a diagonal, you're doing your push. You're going to flatten your hands and then you're going to pull. What I want to remind you is when you flatten your hands, your hands are still uh, parallel to each other and facing forward before you pull, okay? Don't jump the gun and pull before you've actually contacted your opponent, okay? So you've done your push, contact, and then pull. 
Okay, does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> okay, then the fist under elbow. So the diff the uh, stepping for the fist under elbow is, you know, you've done your push and you've done this pull and you've turned your right foot to the uh, 12 o'clock and you're pulling all the way toward the corner. When you come back, you release the left foot and then you push out. When you step here, this is a uh, kind of transition step. So you're stepping one line, two sides here and then ward off. Then you, you're putting your foot, your feet parallel to each other as you pull. When you put your feet parallel to each other, what you're actually doing is you're setting up your feet to do the empty stance to that side. So what does that mean? That means that you have a straight line between the toe of your left foot and the heel of your right foot so that when you turn, you're set up for empty stance and then you change your footwork to do a heel stance, uh, a heel touch. So, so the stepping here is important because it sets up your plant foot for that empty stance. Does that make sense? Yes. Um. So after you make the turn with your foot, I'm thinking when I, what does this say? Let me take a second. So you were saying that your left foot heel is in line with your right foot toes or ball your foot. Okay, so you were here, you turn. When you step out here, you're stepping empty stance. So this foot is lined up with the heel. Okay, that's a, an empty stance. When you put your weight here, you're going to put your foot here and this toe lines up with the heel for another empty stance. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I do, thank you. Okay. <laughs> what are you thinking, Erlen? <laughs> All right. I'm trying to do this on my floor, looking at my feet. And so I've got to the, uh, after I, my arm pushes out and I, and I bring my foot for the first movement of my left foot is an empty step. Yes. And then I, Go forward. Yes. And then turning my head when I move this. So right now, can you see my feet? Yes. Okay. So uh, you're at empty stance. I am. So yes. So then. Then you uh, move your weight to the forward foot. Yeah. And then you move the right foot so that's parallel to the left. Okay, and the what I was trying to caution you for is don't step too far out because then you won't have empty stance between your foot when you pivot that left foot. Yeah, if I'm okay, I'm not. I'm not doing this. I can tell I'm not doing this the way you're describing it. It makes sense, sweet, but I'm not doing it. But that okay. Way. So, so from when you were here and you turned, uh, I should step further back, right? Okay. And you turned here. So you're at 12 o'clock now. When mm -hmm. I step out to the corner, I'm going to step here. I'm here, one line, two sides, right? Empty sticks. Then I put my weight forward and then I step here. So that I have one line, two sides here. So that when I pivot, I have 
a good empty stance, one line, two side. Okay, I think I was stepping farther. So when when I do the last step, I need to make sure that my feet are in line for an empty step oriented towards the, the side. Wall. Yes. Yeah, okay, got right. it. Right, and uh, it's it's kind of tricky in some ways because you also don't want to be cross, right? Mm -hmm. So I want it to be wide enough so you can have a good empty stance, but not too wide so that you end up in a bow stance situation where, by the time you set up for the empty stance. Yeah, I was going too wide because my left foot would end up before the final like punch yeah that foot was too far out and i would have to bring it in to do the empty step and you're saying it should actually already be there it should already be there got it okay thank you okay and also when you're uh, uh doing the punch okay so if i'm doing it so i've stepped i'm stepping here and i'm turning uh let me do it with a hand so that you can see Okay, so I'm here, I'm coming back, I'm turning, I'm pressing down and releasing the front foot. Then I push out, step, ward off, step, and I'm getting ready to pull. Then as I come around, I'm coming around and making my fist as I move my weight to the back foot. Turn, right? And then change my footwork, root and punch. And this punch comes from here. Uh, let's see if I can do it from another direction. Okay. So when I'm coming here, I make my fist, change my footwork, and punch. I am punching diagonally. I am not coming down and up. Okay, you're, you're just punching directly, diagonally. Okay? So in some ways, it's simpler. Yes? All right, and just one more thing on the um so you're uh you're holding your ward off until you actually start to turn your body and then you turn your hand over to pull you're you're pulling so you're uh so when you ward off you step then as your weight shifts back you're you're pulling down making your fist turning your front foot root before you pull up and punch okay so you don't have any strength unless you root first okay so you're you're um you're changing from ward off to to a pull position as as you um as you step mm -hmm. and then you turn is that right yeah there's okay. a rule of thumb for ward off and pull, okay, which you already saw in uh, cloud hands. So if you think of the median line, okay, when you're to the right side, if you're uh, looking at your left hand, once you cross the median line, you should be in ward off. When you cross here, then your palm is out. So palm is in on this side, palm is out on that side as a general rule of thumb, okay? So here, when you ward off, but then when you're pulling, you cross the median line and pull, right? And then you come up and you're doing a direct punch So you have lifted the elbow of your opponent and you are punching the side of his body. Okay, so fist under elbow is fist under your opponent's elbow because you have just lifted the opponent's elbow and you are punching them. 
Okay. Yeah, can you do so, the of that one more time? Uh, which direction would you like? It doesn't matter. I just want to see you move the last portion of that move. Well, all. I'll do it in the direction that you're doing it. Okay. okay. So, so if I'm going from the push here and then I'm flattening, I'm pulling and turning, releasing the left foot, ward off with the left and push out with the right. Step, one line, two sides. Ward off. Step. Make your fist turn. Root. Punch. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So, yes. When you punch, as you're punching, are you, as your waist and everything facing that direction? You're. Um, everything's straight. You're not at an angle, but you're like straight right at it when you get punched. Well, the top part of your body is straight. Your hips still follow your planting foot. Okay. So when you turn, okay, then you're here following your foot, right? right? When I step out and step here, my hips follow this foot because that's going to be my plant foot, right? Then when I come around, my hips are still there, but my upper body is uh, facing side. So your hips are a little bit pointed to the corner, but your yeah. chest pointed right at your feet. Right. Okay, that's it. It's, it's important for you to remember to keep your hips pretty much in the direction of your back foot. The plant foot determines the direction of your hips. And that is why you have to have a wide quad. In other words, in order for your, for your hips to be this way and your upper body to be another direction, okay, you have to be, you have to have flexibility in your hip joints so that you do not collapse your knees, okay? Make sure when I'm saying your hips follow, your knees always follow the foot direction. So the back foot follows and the front foot, the knee has to follow the foot direction. Okay? Okay, thank you. So let's do a quick review of single whip. Okay, I'm going to do it in the direction that you normally do it at the after grasp the bird's tail. Okay, at the end of grasp the bird's tail, you're going to be doing a push, right? When you do single whip, you're going to shift your weight back and flatten your hands. Then what you're going to do is with the waist leading, you're going to turn all the way around, press down, and then release the left foot, ward off with the left, hook in with the right. Standing ward off, step. You're in a bow stance now. Deflect strike. Now this is um, an upright stance, so your hip has to come in. And in order to do that, you're going to turn very slightly more than corner. And you're looking through your tiger's mouth, okay? And you're standing upright. Any questions on that? So remember, the waist leads the limbs. 
So let your, so when you are doing this, okay, when you're here and you're pulling, actually you're, you're pulling, so your hands actually go further than your hips. So my hips end up that way because my foot is that way, right? But my hands are slightly more. And then when I come back, I'm pressing down and then I'm ward off, hook hand. Then as I step out, I'm going to have a standing ward off and step and I'm in a bow stance now. Then as I flatten my foot, I deflect. And then as I bend my knee, I strike and turn a little bit more in order to get my upright position. Okay. Yes. So the first um, new move of the third section is the diagonal ward off, a uh, diagonal single whip. So it's a combination of what you did with uh, uh, fist under elbow and a single whip. So you start very much like fist under elbow. You're going on the diagonal, but then you end up with a single whip toward the corner. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So if you are uh, starting from the push after Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain. So you're kind of going toward that corner. And just like the beginning of Fist Under Elbow, you shift your weight back and flatten your hands. And you turn. And you push down, release the left. And instead of pushing out, you make your hook hand. Okay? And you step out to bow stance. So you're not doing empty stance. You're doing bow stance. And then, so it's just like single whip, except it's to the corner. So just like Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain, step wide enough. So it's, Similar to fist under elbow, but not quite. Questions? No? Nope. Okay. So let's try that a couple of times. Okay. So if you are doing push, you're going to shift your weight back and flatten your hands. Then you're going to turn and pull and your right foot goes to 12 o'clock. And your so your, your hips are going toward 12 o'clock, but your hands actually go to the corner. Then you come back and ward off with the left, hook hand with the right, then standing ward off step, deflect and strike. And once again, you are vertical, okay? So push your hip in and make sure that you are turned to look through your tiger's mouth. So very often people cheat. And what they do is instead of looking through their tiger's mouth, they kind of go like this and kind of look diagonally. <laughs> Move your head. <laughs> okay. Yes. Any questions? So this is a similar timing. And you are, instead of turning to the side, you're going to turn to the corner. You're making a single whip on this plane instead of this plane. OK? 
So let's try it a few more times. I want to make sure that you get your footwork wide enough. Questions? No? I'm sorry, what, what does this occur with? When does this occur? This occurs in the third section. You begin oh. with embrace tiger, return to mountain. Okay. And the next move is diagonal single whip. Okay, thank you. I was gonna, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Make sure I, I was just uh, yeah. looking at the similarity between the, the second and third sections because I like to work from what you know toward the new move, okay? So uh, let's try that again. So if you're at the push to the corner, then you're going to pull back, shifting your weight back. You're releasing the front foot so you can turn and pull. And your hands go to the corner, but your hips and your foot go to the 12 o'clock. Then you shift your weight back, releasing the front foot. Then ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step, deflect, and strike. So, um, so basically, when you strike, you're going to have you're going to have to open your quad a little bit. That's basically the story. <laughs> okay. Once again, we're going, uh, let me do it another direction. I'll do it from this direction. Okay, so if I'm at push and I come back and flatten my hands, then I turn and pull. My foot goes to the 12 o'clock, my hands go to the corner. I come back and release the front foot, ward off with the left, hook hand with the right, standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. One more time. I'll do it the same direction. So push, flatten your hands, shift weight back, pull and turn. Press down, release the front foot. Ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step, deflect and strike. It's a great temptation to lean forward, but you're going to have to pull in in order to get like that last little bit for your strike, okay? So you're starting, you, you're shifting weight, and then at the very end, you're going to pull in and get a little extra for that strike, okay? Question? No. <laughs> okay, let's do it a couple more times and then we'll do it with Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain. Okay, so I'm going to do it one more time in this direction, then one time in the direction I would you would normally do it. So here, we're at push toward the corner. Then we're going to shift back and flatten our hands. Then we're going to pull and turn. Press down, release the front foot. Ward off with the left, hook hand with the right. Standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. And I'll do it from the standard direction. So we're going to do push. Diagonal single width, shift back as you flatten your hands. Turn and pull, right foot goes to 12 o'clock. Press down, release the left foot. 
Ward off at the left, hook hand with the right, standing ward off step, deflect, and strike. Yes. Um, I always get a little squishy on the final direction of where things are. Um, so when you're in your final, you have a, you have a bow step and yes. you have your hook is like, are, are they going this way diagonally or there's, is there one out and one? So um, what happens is when you think about what you're do when you're doing it straight, okay? When you're doing it straight, your your left hand is kind of lined up with your front foot, right? Yeah. And your right is to the corner. So it's like 135 degrees separated, right? So think of this dance, turn toward the corner. Okay. So you're sort of towards the wall and your hand, your strike so hand. Is so what happens is because your bow stance is toward the corner, you're 12 o'clock here and you're toward the corner here. This one is over this foot, right? And this one is actually almost to the side. It's like to the side. You see what I'm saying? Okay, thank you. Yeah, it just feels weird, you know, because it's new. It, 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 it's funny because, you know, it, it's easy for me to say, oh, think about doing it straight and just move it over toward the corner. But it isn't really that easy to do. And it really feels like you have to step wider. You know, you think about your, that somehow because you're stepping to the corner, when you're here, the temptation is to step here and not here because you don't get your shoulder width. You did step here when you did fist under elbow, but now I want you to step wider so that you have that shoulders width, okay? So just like Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain, you're going to have to think wider. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so what I'd like to do now is do a few times from the beginning, which is starting from Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain, we're going to go into diagonal single whip so that you get a sense of the transition. Okay, so in the same direction as you. Feet shoulders width apart, cross hands, okay? Embrace tiger, return to mountain. Shift weight right. Turn the left foot just past the corner. Shift your weight back. Separate your hands. Pull in the right foot. Swing step. Brush. Strike. Roll back. Circle your arms as your weight goes back and turn to the side. Press, pull in the right, attach the left and expand forward. Push, square up your shoulders in the front foot direction and flatten your hands. Come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest and push up to shoulder level. Diagonal single width. Flatten your hands as you shift your weight back. Turn and pull. Right foot goes 12 o'clock. Right, the hands go to the corner. Press down and release the front foot. Ward off with the left. Hook hand with the right. Standing ward off. Step to bow stance. Deflect. Strike. How did that feel? Let's do it a couple more times, okay? Then we'll get everything together. Okay. Shoulders width apart, feet facing forward, cross hands. 
Embrace tiger, return to mountain. Shift right, turn the left foot just past the corner. Pull in, separate your hands. Pull in the right foot, swing, step, brush, strike, roll back, circle your arms and uh, move your weight back. Turn to the side, press, pull in the right, attach the left, expand forward, push, square up your shoulders in the front foot direction, flatten your hands, come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest, and push up to shoulder level. Diagonal single width, shift back, flatten your hands. Turn and pull, right foot to 12 o'clock, press down, release the left foot, ward off with the left, hook hand with the right, standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. Try again, okay? Feet shoulders width apart, toes pointed forward, cross hands. Embrace tiger, return to mountain. Shift right, turn the left foot past the corner. Shift weight back as you separate your hands. Pull in the right foot, swing, step, brush, strike. Roll back. Circle your arms. As your weight comes back, turn to the side. Press, pull in the right. Attach the left and press forward. Push, square up your shoulders to the front foot position. Flatten your hands, come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest and push up to shoulder level. Diagonal single width, shift back, flatten your hands, turn and pull. Right foot goes to 12 o'clock, hands go to the corner. Press down, release the left foot, ward off with the left, hook hand with the right, standing ward off, step, deflect, strike. How does that feel? A question. Yeah. During pushes, um, my right knee, or your knee should never go past the ball of your foot. Is that correct? That's generally the case, yes. Okay. Thank you. So if I'm pushing in that direction, okay, What happens is my see, knee I, yeah, I can see it. is behind the ball of my foot. But also, I have a straight line from the heel of my foot to the nape of my neck. Can you see that? Yes. So I'm pushing. So the important thing for you to remember on push is, uh, uh, let's say, you're at right ward off, and you're going to roll back and press and push, you're going to come back, hands in front of your chest, and push forward. But you see that my body from my hip to my neck is always slanted, okay? So when I'm here, I am squaring up, but as I come back, I am not going here, okay? I am here, even when I'm back. And I'm pushing off the back leg and catching it with my front leg. So it's important that you try to keep your torso between your feet. If you extend beyond your feet, you're gonna lose your balance and you're going to give your opponent the advantage, right? So just 
think about squaring up. Your hips are still toward the corner. You're squaring up, flattening your hands. You're coming back. And what are you doing here? You're bending your back foot. You're pushing off the front foot and bending your back. And then you're going to push off the back and catch with the front. So you should have a sense of this kind of motion. And if you look at my shoulder, I'm at the same height. That is how I keep my height through the form. I'm taking it all up with my legs. Okay, so do not, okay, up and down. Stay at the same level. I, and one of the things people underestimate in Tai Chi is it really strengthens your legs because it causes you, it requires you to open your qua and it requires you to take up the height with your legs. So, for example, when you're doing cloud hands, You want your shoulders to be at the same height the whole time, right? And that requires that you take it up with your legs. Same thing with repulse monkey. When you're doing repulse monkey, you're at the end of here. You're doing swing step, but I am not going up, down. Right? right? I'm taking it all up with my legs. But doing that really helps your balance because it really gives you control. And that's really what you want. So it's worth the effort. <laughs> so why don't we do one more time and then we'll close class, okay? So. Cross hands, feet shoulders width apart. Embrace tiger, return to mountain. Shift right, turn the left toe past the corner. As you shift back, separate your hands, pull in the right foot, swing, step, brush, strike. Roll back, shift back and circle your arms. Turn to the side, press, pull in the right, attach the left, expand forward, push, square up your shoulders to the front foot direction, flatten your hands, come back over a ball, hands in front of your chest, and push forward to shoulder level. Diagonal single width, shift back, flatten your hands, turn and pull. Right foot to 12 o'clock, hands to the corner, press down, release the left foot, roll, ward off with the left, hook hand with the right, standing ward off step, deflect, and strike. Okay. Any final questions? Okay. Well, thank you for very much for attending class. And Didi will be back next week. <laughs> thank you.